Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Today we are joined by Steve Kapusinski from Allegra to talk about the value of print advertising in a digital world. And I'm going to start with just a little bit of housekeeping. <clears throat> Your friends will be muted throughout the webinar, but if you have a question, you can type it into the question box, and we'll have a short Q&A at the end of the presentation if time permits. If you don't already know, my name is Jess Larkin, and I'm the Marketing and Communication Specialist at Cornerstone. My information is right there on the screen, so if you'd like to get in contact with me, I can help you flush out ideas for refreshing your brand. Um, you can also give us a follow on social media. We post industry and Cornerstone updates and information, so go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or YouTube to give us a follow. Earn cash with Cornerstone's 2021 Agent Incentive Program, which rewards you for your new group and individual sales. The top 20 qualifiers will receive cash prizes up to $5,000, plus one lucky qualifier will win a weekend getaway. So you can register for that online at www.drnstone.com. We're also very excited to announce the launch of our brand new Cornerstone website, which has a more uh, updated and user-friendly resource center. The Cornerstone Resource Center has a fresh new face with, it, with its brand new document search feature and easier access to technology, these webinar recordings, the white papers that our in-house experts write, and more. So check that out at drnstone.com. Autopilot is a compensation-based client referral program that offers the services of licensed representatives to quote, enroll, support, and provide year-round services to clients that may fall out of your business scope but never off your radar. So under this program, you can focus on growing your business with the assurance that your clients will continue to receive the benefits of your market expertise and continued superior service and support. Our talented team is going to take care of your client's health insurance needs for individual and family coverage, employee benefits, or Medicare solutions. So go to www.crnstone today to activate, and you can learn more on the Cornerstone website. All right, let's go ahead and get started with talking about the value of print marketing. I'm going to hand it over to Steve from Allegra. Take it away, Steve. Good morning. Thank you all. First, thank you all for signing up for this. Um, this is my second I'm doing this for you all, so if you're a repeat um, visitor, thank you for uh, coming back. It's always good to be refreshed on the knowledge, because we are inundated with so much every year, it's hard to keep track of everything. A little about us. Um, Allegra is um, marketing print mail, two brands, uh, one roof. Uh, Allegra Marketing Print Mail would be graphic design marketing like we're doing today. Of course, traditional print mail services like we're talking today. I am not the president of Cincinnati. I am the president of Cincinnati's <laughs> Allegra and Image 360. So Image 360 would be, as it says, graphics. I, would, I call that visual graphics. Anything from lobby signage, wall graphics, vehicle graphics could be event event graphics, event displays, those sorts of things. Here I am. I'm your local single source for print, marketing, and science solutions. Um, we are an industry leader in communications trends. I am part of a franchise, which uh, I'll talk a little bit about because I get a huge amount of support from the home office that allows us uh, to really be a strong resource for you all in your marketing. Um, I've owned it for 15 years now. Um, that is me with my recent uh, Business of the Year award from the Sharonville Chamber. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, moving right along, um, we help you achieve your goals. Um, these are my primary business objectives. I believe that this should be every uh, business owner's primary business objectives, and that is to create a strong brand, use it consistently, protect and grow existing customers, target and acquire new prospects, and of course keep your employees informed and motivated. Uh, because they can, they, are, they, are, they can also be selling in indirect and subtle ways that you don't even know. So anyway, primary business objectives, we will uh, here to help you create an, a strong brand, use it consistently, 
protect and grow existing customers, target and acquire new prospects, and of course, like I said, keeping your employees informed and happy. What does this mean for you? This is the best of both worlds. The response and service of our local independent company, and again, we are local, committed to this community. Um, I just want to say that one of the reasons that I won the best uh, business of the year award was because of my uh, commitment to nonprofits and supporting them in their uh, uh, events and, uh, and, and basically events. So again, we certainly encourage you to uh, keep involved in those sorts of uh, give back arrangements where you, you keep your visibility to the community out there. Um, as I said, I'm part of a franchise, it's a great franchise, the resources of a large, experienced international company with talent, knowledge, and tools to apply the best advice and best implementation practices to your business goals. We are a single point of contact, so this, of course, is convenience. You're not, we're eliminating multiple suppliers and points of contact. Um, since we do as much as we can in-house and we take care of it all for you, we can manage the cost through process efficiencies, time savings, accountability, there's no finger pointing, access to subject matter experts, which are trained in all of our marketing and communications disciplines. As I said, we have a team that support us from the home office so that we can support you. All right, this is pretty noisy, uh, but we will be walking through this throughout the uh, session today. Um, this is really what it shows is a lot of the different ways that you can inspire your customers throughout their journey. Uh, if you want to kind of focus on the middle bar there, we're going to be talking about the awareness, consideration, purchase, retention, and advocacy. And, and uh, we'll get into that. Uh, let's see. Right, marketing, again, don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about me. Just want to let you know this is what we do. Um, Print, of course, and I've said about that. I don't need to really spend a lot of time on that. We can do all kinds of print, whatever you need. Um, really what we're talking about today, and again, I don't want to dig into the weeds with all of this, but certainly all the mailing services that we can do so that you don't have to be um, trying to figure out how to do this yourself. If you have any questions, you can certainly just contact me, and we can walk you through the whole process, and we can take care of it all for you. Um, or we can do some of it, you can do some of it. It's really, we're there for however you want to use us, but certainly we are mailing experts and uh, are there to help you. Just quickly, graphics, as I mentioned, the visual graphics side of things, um, that's what we can do also. Signage, I don't want to spend a lot more time on that. Uh, displays, again, we talk, we'll talk about a little bit about events networking events, trade shows, these are such things we can help you with, again, with your presence there. And uh, again, it's a point of contact. Okay, what we'll cover today, uh, today's landscape for marketers, customer journey mapping, which you saw that long, noisy uh, screen, uh, tips to brand, promote, and grow your business, and of course, a summary. Uh, again, for those who attended last year, thanks for returning. Refreshing our memory is very important for long-term retention of knowledge. The traditional and time-honored marketing message is getting the right message to the right people at the right time, and in recent years, adding using the right medium. All this for less than what you can do through personal sales. So you're, so you're trying to get people to respond to you, and they the right people um, at a lower cost than trying to do personal sales or having a sales force to do that. The average person is exposed to 1.85 million messages per year, which is about 5,000 per day. The average number of ads only that we have some awareness of per day is 86. The average number of ads only that made an impression 12. So from 5,000 touch points 
that you're inundated with per day, you're maybe retaining 12 of that. So you were hit with a lot of stuff every day. So keeping yourself top of mind is a challenge. Direct marketing. This is what we do. Um, we are doing direct marketing, which is a type of advertising that seeks to elicit an action from a selected group of consumers. Selected means targeted consumers in response to a communication from you, the marketer. So again, we're, we're talking about targeted direct mail, targeted direct marketing, as opposed to um, advertising, which is really more about reach. We're targeting versus reach. The communication itself can be any variety of formats, including postal mail, telemarketing, direct mail marketing, and point of sale interactions. Uh, you say, wait a minute, point of sale, that's like a supermarket. Well, a trade show booth can be considered a point of sale interaction. So um, that's why we have that in there, because again, networking could be a point of sale interaction. Considered. How many touch points does it take to generate a lead? Um, seven to 13. So it's a, it's, it's a process. I know I do it since I'm doing sales. It's a process, seven to 13 touch points to generate a lead. And we'll talk about all of that. Uh, we're not the only ones saying it. Uh, if any of you are familiar with Salesforce as a customer relationship manager, management uh, software, they're saying six to eight. Online Marketing Inst Institute says it takes seven to 12. Today's consumer naturally distrusts marketing. They conduct more independent research and take more convincing before they'll buy. The internet has been a huge tool for independent research, which is a good thing, um, because you'll have more informed buyers. That, of course, that make sure that you're on your toes, but more convincing means more touch points with relevant, 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 mm -hmm. relevant information. So again, uh, your consumers are gonna do a lot of independent research. 60 per 80 percent of the buying process takes place before a consumer makes contact with a brand. Consumers, as I said, are gathering information and they're evaluating their options. They're looking at different companies, drawing conclusions based on the information that they have. Here we are again. The customer journey is going to vary based on the type of company and how their product is sold. This general overview is still a solid place to start the conversation. And we're gonna use this customer journey to help you change the conversation and be more strategic. Understanding the consumer journey. All right, here we go. Are you easily found as the source? Avoid going directly to the sale of a specific tactic before you have thorough information regarding the customer's primary goals. Are you easily found as a source? Of course, that means you've got a website. And at this day and age, if you don't have a website, you're not considered a real company. So you definitely want to have an, a website. Uh, this website you want to have that's easy to navigate. Um, consideration, why should I buy? What is your point of difference? I, I mean, the point of difference can be different and will be probably different from one prospect to the next. Uh, so it is important to gain an understanding of the prospect's goals or pain points and tailor the discussion in a way that highlights your differences. In a highly competitive environment, you, you are probably scratching your head and thinking, you know, how, how am I really different from this other, my competitors? And that's why uh, understanding the prospect with whom you're talking and trying to reach or trying to touch um, because therefore you can tailor your discussion uh, in a way that highlights your uh, touch points or hi highlights your differences. Uh, numerous touch points, again, will reveal this uh, point of difference. Purchase, what is the call to action or sense of urgency? Why should I buy now? Again, it may not be the first time that you actually talk to them and they understand who you are, uh, but again, you want to stay top of mind because at some point in time, 
they will have a reason to purchase from you. Um, it's, you now you've got the customer. Retention, what's next? Why should I come back? Great customer experience will drive great reviews and more prospects. Advocacy, why should I tell others? Again, this gets back to the great customer experience. The customer will uh, talk to other people. Uh, they will recommend you. They'll put good and great uh, reviews on their website or on, your, on, on Google. And uh, that's all part of getting new business for you. So again, great customer experience will drive great reviews and more prospects. All right, as I said, it takes seven to 13 touch points to generate a lead. You'll see a lot of this. Again, going back to the first part of the customer journey, awareness, why do I care? Well, you're gonna, you wanna get in front of customers. As I said, you wanna be top of mind and stay there. You wanna maybe publish some content. You wanna speak their language, which means you need to understand them and their industry, understand their issues, Show relevance, of course, then make an impression. Um, during this time, the customer, like I said, is becoming aware of you, uh, is noticing you. Uh, they're shopping, and there's subconsciously or consciously the journey has begun um, as you keep touching them and letting them know who you are. Um, marketing tactics for this, as I said, are going to be cross-channel. You may use some of these, you may not use all of them, um, but direct mail is part of that. Targeted direct mail is part of that. Um, and any others, others can be part of that also. 56% of consumers visit a company's website after reading direct mail. Direct mail, again, like, just like it says there, direct mail can drive uh, website traffic. Consideration, then why should I buy? Moving along the customer journey, um, they're considering you. So for, as I said before, you want to have an up, updated modern website. You want to have new content that's being added all the time or on a regular basis. Uh, you want to have the right content so that you're, you're basically making sure that you're sending the message that you want to send. You want to showcase your value. You're establishing credibility, basically. Uh, during this consideration phase, the customer is learning more. Uh, they might buy, uh, but they're certainly reading online reviews and they're determining the credibility, checking to see if you have what they need. They are judging you based on your site. Um, they can leave a website if it's difficult to navigate. Um, marketing tactics here, uh, the search engine optimization, can help with that, brochures, collateral, content on the website. As far as informing content, videos and blogs, you may have an industry resource for that, so you don't have to feel like, oh, I've got to create my own blog. You may be able to use uh, industry resources and put the blogs on your website. Here we are, 40% of visitors leave a website that takes more than three seconds to load. And as I mentioned before, it's difficult to navigate. Okay, why should I buy now? Um, you're trying to motivate them and close the, close the deal. Um, you wanna have, again, you wanna make sure you have a great experience that retains them. Uh, marketing tactics, product sheets, brand folders for um, appointments that have relevant information in there to leave behind, such as promotional flyers. Um, signage, that again, that probably relates more to an event. Uh, point of purchase displays, again, what I, what I would relate that to in terms of this insurance industry today is, uh, would be a networking event where maybe you're um, having a, a booth there or a trade show or a business expo where you have a trade, where you have a booth. Um, as I mentioned before, I would call that a point of purchase display. Customer here, of course, is uh, 
gathering remaining info, information, and making a final decision. E-commerce sites can gain up to a 35% increase in conversion rate through better checkout design. In this case, or your case, checkout design uh, would refer to easily navigable and completion of the, say, contact us or get a quote form or any other forms like that. Uh, you want to make it easy for them to um, engage back with you. Did I say it takes seven to 13 touch points to generate a lead? It takes seven to 13 touch points to generate a lead. Okay, retention. So you've done a good job, you've worked through the process, and uh, you now have a customer, and you want to retain this customer and maybe grow business from that customer. So you have to have a retention strategy. What can that be? It can be thank you cards, it can be customer, um, appreciation events, it doesn't have to be crazy expensive, um, just something where you can be touching them all along. Again, it's still, even though you're, you've already got the client, you want to continue to touch them because you want them to stay top of mind uh, because there may be more product, there may be more products and services that you have that they will need at some point in time. So you want to be there when they need you. You want to so you can do emails such as Constant Contact, Mail. So there's lots of different email platforms. Uh, we can help you with that. But again, I don't want to make this a sales pitch. I just want to let you know that we have some of these products that we can help you to do. Uh, newsletters, rewards programs, and then promotional items. Those are all pieces that help you stay top of mind and continue to send your message to your customers so that they are there when they're there. Sorry, that they, they know that you are there when they need you. The probability of selling to existing customers is high. 60 to 70% will buy from you again. Advocacy, how can I tell others? This is more for the customer. You're rewarding their loyalty. So the customer is going to be advocating for you, which you want, because you had the, you, they experienced a great customer experience with you. And they want to come, so you want to have them complete a survey. You want to have them writing reviews. You want to have them sharing the content uh, that you have. Um, referring new business, of course. Um, marketing tactics here. Online reviews. Customer surveys, content sharing, um, Facebook, all of those. Referral programs. All these are rewarding the loyalty. Peer recommendations carry 10 times the weight versus salespeople. So again, relating back to a great customer experience. All right, direct print mail marketing. Response rates exceed digital. You can send a whole lot of emails out and you get a very, very low response rate. And, and it's, as you know, as we all know, uh, so easy to click delete on, an, on what looks like an online digital or email prospecting message. Um, I know myself that when I'm going through the mail, a postcard, you can't help but engage with it because it's right there in front of you. So even if you're going to end up throwing it out, you're going to see it before you throw it out. More than eight of 10 people pick up their mail at the first opportunity. 94% of mail is engaged with in some way. Response rates for both house lists, a house list is your own customer list, and prospect list, 4.9%, nearly doubled in 2018. This channel sees its greatest use in business to consumer campaigns. 80% of recipients consider time with mail well spent, up from 73% in 2017. There are some direct mail myths. Direct mail is dead. I know from my own ex recent experience in this business that we've seen a resurgence in direct mail and inquiries um, and direct mail because people are discovering that it is highly targetable and you can manage your 
campaign cost very well by the targeting. Um, so it's not too expensive. It's again because you can you can target your mail to a, a tight list if you want, um, and, and so you're not having to spend X number of dollars because like. For instance, email campaigns require you to, to buy a minimum number of email addresses. And that and again, that's that's not a good way to manage your cost and it, and it may not be really targeted as much as you'd like. Um, and then another myth is online is the only place to do digital marketing and direct mail is too hard. It's direct mail is not too hard. We're here to help you on, with that. And we can walk you through all aspects of this. It's also worth noting that even Google, the king of digital, sends direct mail pieces out. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Info trend study, 66% of direct mail is open. I don't know if you want to do a quick calculation in your head of how many, how many emails, uh, prospecting emails that you open, but I bet it's not a 66%. 56% of consumers who responded to direct mail went online or visited a physical store. Uh, as I said before, I believe that uh, direct mail does drive digital traffic. 84% re reported that personalization made them more likely to open a direct mail piece. 76% of consumers trust mail when they want to make a purchase. 61% of consumers say that direct mail influenced their purchase decision. Um, print stands out. Consumers receive an average of 567 promotional emails weekly compared with 12 pieces of direct mail. Print is memorable. Brand recall is 70% higher than for print than for digital. Print is trustworthy. 55% prefer paper documents because they believe they are more secure. A millennial is anyone born between 1981 and 1996, meaning that the oldest of the group are already approaching 40 years old with over 17 million being parents. 90% of millennials think direct mail advertising is reliable and trustworthy. So that 90% of millennials say they prefer direct mail over email when receiving promotional items. 75% of millennials find that the mail they receive is valuable. 63% of millennials who responded to a direct mail piece within the last three months made a purchase. All right, you are in the financial vertical and the financial vertical has the highest direct mail spend. So that includes, of course, banks, credit unions. Here we are, insurance, loans, investments. The reason this direct spend is high is because it works. Direct mail elements that impact success. There are three elements that relate to response rate from a direct mail campaign. You can see how, here they are. The list, the most important is your list quality. 50% of the response rate is related to the list quality. 30% is an offer. So you want, always want to have some sort of an offer on a mail piece. You have to have a reason for them to act. I mean, introduction is nice uh, for maybe bringing some having them to get to know you, but really if you have an offer, then they're thinking about whether or not they need to use you and when. Creative, 20%. We don't need to create award-winning designs for our mail pieces. We just, of course, do not want them to be off-putting. So really, we want to, we want to focus on finding and, and creating a list that that is very relevant to your target and therefore gets the highest uh, response rate. And of course, frequency. I, I know it sounds self-serving because I'm in the direct mail business, 
but again, this relates back to touch points. Um, we say that we'd like to see anybody that's doing a direct mail campaign, targeted direct mail campaign, uh, we're going to do at least three direct mail uh, executions or deployments. Risk quality is paramount. Uh, this is where we can help in both controlling the cost of your campaign and at the same time create the most relevant contacts. Spend the time to consider what makes up your most relevant contact, and then have a conversation with your marketing partner. As I said, the list can account for more than 50% of a program's success. When considering direct mail, consider the who in terms of demographics, geographic, and likely to purchase. Personalized, addressed to an individual. If a business's customer base can be defined where they live and median income, a saturated mail option may be ideal versus a targeted custom mailing. For your business, which is primarily, no, no, it's not primarily business to business, business to consumer, you're really more about trying to find the right person, not necessarily the, the uh, uh, geographics. Uh, we like to use every door direct mail. Um, for those customers of ours, which are salons or restaurants, those types of places where really they're looking to get grab their customer base from a geographical area. You're trying to reach a certain type of demographic with your products and services. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the personalized aspect of this. Um, you can you can do personal personalization can be as simple as saying on a postcard, "Hi Steve, we thought you might be interested in this," uh, or it can be. Um, as complex as as you want it to be, it, it could be targeted so that if your if your prospect is a man, you could send a separate a separate messaging to a male uh, prospect. Uh, if it's a woman, you can send separate messaging to a woman. And again, all of this can be automatically personalized. Types of lists, house file which again is your existing customer base, response, specialty files, buyers, subscribers, donors, uh, compiled files, um, records are compiled from a variety of sources. We use AccuData. So we would, if you're looking for prospects, we would help you create a compiled file, which is, which we'll talk more about this in the next few uh, slides which is about finding the right, what we call selects, so that your target is as closely defined as you want it to be. How to get a list. As you said, you can create a list yourself. Again, if these are your customers, they're already doing business with you, then you can, print, you can market to them. You can rent the list of another company go to a list compiler, broker, and rent the names. Um, and then exchange names with a non-competitive organization who markets to the same types of audience. So I just wanted to mention something br briefly. On a, on a rented list, which is what we would uh, help you create um, from our compiler, you can either rent it for one use or you can rent it for unlimited use for a year. And the difference between a single use and a multi-use is the multi-use costs about double of a single use. But you can use it unlimited times during a, for a year. And, and if we're talking about doing um, several targeted mailings, then the, the multi-use is the way to go because you're getting multiple touches, you're gaining familiarity and becoming top of mind. Several companies like Dun & Bradstreet and Info USA, USA compile B2B addresses. Uh, lots of different sources here, applications. 
Um, I would also highly recommend, if you don't already belong to a Chamber of Commerce, join a Chamber of Commerce, be active. Uh, you'll have access to all the other members' contact information. And by being active, again, that's part of this whole networking, staying top of mind and getting familiarity with you. What I talked about earlier in terms of a compiled list, we have basic selects, which are line of business, standard industrial code, SIC, geography, company size, location type, phone number, key contacts, uh, whether they're minority owned, uh, presence of a URL, fax numbers. Basic selects are included in the base cost of the list, while premium selects add cost. Premium selects are like square footage, owns versus rents, sales volume, et cetera, et cetera. You can read through down the list there. Um, the more relevant the selects are, that are chosen, the better the targeting. While premium selects do add cost, they are, they are offset by um, providing you with a smaller list, so then your list cost goes down. So you're trading off some um, cost by adding in premium selects to get better targeting, but then your list size drops down, and so the cost of the mailing is reduced, both the list itself and, of course, the printed and mailing and postage goes down. So, so there's, again, it's worth a conversation to really um, target and find out how that uh, impacts the cost of the campaign. Business data advantages. Well, you have a targeted audience, high percentage of phones. Again, I would recommend that if you're going to buy a list or rent a list, you get it with the phone numbers, then you have the mailing list address and you have phone numbers so you can start contacting and working your way to find the uh, the right person, the appropriate person that you're trying to reach. High percentage of top contacts. You have the purchase authority, uh, job title functions are a lot of times in there. And they may be an untapped consumer source. Business data cautions. Low percent of functional contacts. Uh, there may be updated inconsistency because the information is sometimes gathered from a third-party source, which leads to inaccuracies. Um, P.O. boxes, street addresses, suite numbers, phone numbers may not be uh, up to date. We have, uh, and our compiler uses a function from the U.S. Postal Service called Move Update or NCOA, which is National Change of Address. Um, this is when you move you send in or go online to the post office and tell them your new address, and then and they update the addresses. Um, it's less, I mean, there's less moving around of businesses, um, but sometimes the, uh, the addresses that they have are not complete. And so um, sometimes the NCOA can help with that, but again, no list is perfect. Inconsistent SIC coding. Um, if you've ever walked walk through or reviewed the SIC coding um, list, it's huge. And as any business, you can have primary, secondary, and tertiary SIC codes that still relate to your business. And so when we're looking at uh, targeting businesses, I would work with my compiler to say, well, what other possible SIC code will this business, these businesses be in so that we try to cover all the bases and get the most accurate business list? Questions to ask. How old is the list? What other companies are using, have used the list recently? What is the source of the data? When was the last major update? Is the list single usage or multi-usage? As I talked about before, um, I certainly recommend multi-use for a year because it's only double the cost and you can use it as many times as you want. Uh, we talked about selects and uh, in our conversations we would 
provide the cost of these before you buy anything. Is there a minimum order charge? Is there a delivery charge? How often is the list NCOA cleansed and re-verified? Again, NCOA is National Change of Address, which is the same as Move Update. What is the count and order turnaround time? Um, so let me just spend a little minute here. If you are, say, come to me and say, I want to reach these types of people, how many people, I mean, how many names is that? Um, and how much is it going to cost? So it costs nothing for us to go through and get um, a count based on the selects and the geographics. And so that costs nothing to do. And I get that turned around in a day. And say the selects and the geographics that we, we discussed and we got ended up having 20,000 addresses. Well, there's a cost for that. And you can say, well, that's 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 way too many. Let's let's cut it down and let's see what the geo, what changes, and let's get the list down to three five thousand names. And so we can go back and forth at no cost to really fine tune the list size and the demographics, and then therefore the cost of the campaign. And we can add on telemarketing or email. There is a cost for that, but they can be added on. I talked a little bit earlier about personalization. Personalization has proven to increase response rates. Uh, the second one down is your segment, which is financial and insurance. Static uh, Direct Marketing Association, DMA data, is a little over a 2% response rate. If you personalize it, that jumps up to almost 11%. So by adding personalization to your mail pieces, you can increase response rates pretty significantly. And happy to talk to you at, uh, at any time about how that would work. Again, include a call to action. I mentioned that before. The job of your offer is to motivate action. Um, you want to have a high perceived value to the prospect. And again, it may not be the first time, but if you're there when they need you, that's a high value. So keep at it. Simple. Uh, Call to action. It doesn't have to be a you know for the insurance companies that you are. Um, you're not going to be you know 10% off probably, but it can be uh, you know free information, um, that sort of thing. Delivered with a sense of urgency. It appeals to your target off audience, but doesn't attract an unqualified customer. Um, I know that I've get calls in from customer prospects. And they're not they're really not qualified or it's not a good fit for me, and that's just time wasted. So again, target, uh, have the call to action, target it also. Again, discount offers may not be appropriate for the insurance industry. Uh, payment term offers might. Again, I, I, you can see what works for that. Promotions. Um, some ideas, free samples, free downloads, uh, valuable information for B2B, best practices, research reports, case studies, cost calculators. Frequency increases effectiveness. We've said that all along. 7 to 12 touch points over a 12-month period, repetitive messages and offers. And then, of course, once you've gained a customer, we talk about reinforcing and building the relationship. Because of competing channels, people need to be reminded more now than in the past. Um, some types of direct mailers, I mentioned earlier the postcard. It's, it's simple. It can get your attention. You almost can't help but read it um, before you throw it away. A self-mailer. Uh, it's a little more complex, and it may have a, a business return mail. So there's a way to get um, someone to respond back to an offer, to the offer, and uh, and you know exactly where that came from. A letter package, again, more more detail, more information. Um, less likely to be opened on the first 
time, but as part of a campaign, um, once there's some familiarity, uh, some perceived value, then it'll be open and then you can really uh, message appropriately. As Jesse said earlier, Google uses direct mail. <laughs> so again, it's 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 not dead. And I said I've seen a, a significant increase in inquiries for uh, direct mail marketing from uh, prospects that are responding to my marketing efforts. So we want to tie direct mail to some sort of digital brand experience. Use data to speak directly to your audience. Personal URLs are part of an increased response rates due to personalization. Uh, colleges, if you've got children or you yourself may have even uh, uh, recognized this uh, when you were of college age, um, you started getting mailings from colleges and it might have had a personal URL with your name on it and, and uh, you click and it sends you right to your own landing page. That is like the ultimate of personalization there. Um, include web information on your digital presence. Again, this is for a direct mail piece to drive them to your website. Um, you want to be able to have information on there. And I, just as I just said, consider personalized URLs because if they see that, it's a quick click and it goes right to a landing page that talks directly to them. Give your recipients a chance to talk back through social media, Facebook page address, Twitter handles, other platforms. How to improve your response rates. Print only, 6%. Conversion rate, 16%. Print and email, as you can see, 7%, 7.6%. Conversion rate, 18 Print and web landing, personal URLs, yet higher uh, print email web landing pages. The more touches, the higher the response rate. Print email web landing, mobile marketing, very high. And even a response rate of 6% is higher than it was when I first bought this business 15 years ago. So again, the myth of print mail marketing being dead is not there for sure. In summary, Personalization is here to stay. I don't need to say anything more about that uh, now. Automation and data intelligence help solve when and sell to whom. Integrate with other channels. Cross-channel marketing. Must integrate technology with print and other media. Think mobile. It seems like everybody's on their phones all the time searching. Engagement, think of new ways to stand out. Um, one thing, of course, relates, that relates to social media posting, face-to-face -face networking, engagement. Multiple responsive devices, that gets back to your, your phones and your, you know, really anything that's uh, responsive. Direct mail benefits, high attention value or engagement. Highly selective, there's less waste because we've been very careful and intentional about how we created our list. We have greater creative control for greater impact, so we have flexible formats. So as I showed you before, there's several different formats we can use. Time and control, short lead time. We can turn things, we can get things turned around in a short time. Long shelf life, it's easy to share. You could still put magnets of offers on your refrigerator, unless it's a stainless steel refrigerator. You can do that. Um, measurable return on investment. Measurable means mention this mailer or code or bring this card back or whatever. Um, so it is measurable. More data equals more intelligence. Again, going back to that mantra of the right message to the right person the right channel, the right time. Understand your customer's buying journey, and this is where the touches come in. Content is king at every touch point. Know your customers and where to find more. 
if you happen to have a rather large customer database, we can help you with finding more customers like that. So, that's all I have. Um, here's my contact information. Jess, you want to take yeah. over from here? Yes, thank you so much, Steve. Um, My pleasure. We just have a couple of minutes here for a brief Q&A, so if you have any questions, you can type them into the chat box, and I will share them with Steve. Um, I do have just a couple of questions. One thing that um, I think is really important to note and that you've noted throughout the presentation is that it's not direct mail or technology. You don't have to choose between one or two of uh, one or the other. You get to do all of it all at the same time, and that's where it's most valuable. It's not, you know, whether or not you should get a website. You should have a website, but you also need those 7 to 13 touch points in order for everything to work cohesively. And I think that's really important to note because, you know, um, a lot of uh, agents in the industry are just jumping into digital space, and some people are a little bit hesitant to do that. Um, but it, it really is important, even if you're um, just thinking about doing something like direct mail, um, to help you get better response rates. So I think that was a really good point to make. Um, one thing that I did have a question on is how you can optimize your messaging on a specific direct mail piece that would encourage more responses. So you noted, you noted like putting call to actions on there. Is there any other kind of messaging that you could tweak to make it a little bit more, um, that you would get more responses? I think just trying to do the research ahead of the campaign so that you understand or think, the more information you have about the prospect, the more targeted you can make the messaging. Mm -hmm. So, and that's going to, as I said, and, and it's, it's going to change, it's going to be different uh, prospect to prospect. And again, that's where maybe personalization comes in because that helps uh, with targeting the message to that individual. Mm -hmm. But again, the more, you want, the more you know about the prospect, the, the better your targeting messaging mm -hmm. can be. And what they specifically need. Correct. Um, why do you think that consumers tend to trust um, print advertising more than they trust digital? Oh, good question. Um, maybe it's because it's been the traditional source mm -hmm. for a long, long time. Um, I think that we get hit with so much spam anymore um, with with the email marketing that there may be, is the question mark right away, is, is this spam or is this real? Whereas mm -hmm. Or it's just going to get me a virus. Yeah, right, it's going to get me a virus. Uh, whereas a direct mail piece, I mean, it's, it's, that's what it is. It is what it is right there, and you can call directly. And, and again, you don't have to worry about whether, you know, whether you're going to get a virus or is it spam or not. Mm -hmm. And they have to target those lists very specifically yeah, as yeah. well. Um, you kind of covered this, but why it's important to have a website if you're doing mostly print advertising, just the conglomeration of all those different touch points is yeah. important. Just to reinforce, if you're any any more, if you're not, if you don't have a website, you're not a real business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just the way it is. I will say that you know, as a as a consumer myself, typically I do go online to check Google reviews, I check their website, I check everything before I even go try out their services or even go to a restaurant. Yeah. If they have a website that I can check out the menu for, you know, I, I always tend to go there before doing anything. Yeah. Right. Because um, you just you just never know. Um, and you know, if somebody has, you know, eighty Google reviews in comparison to another person that has two, I'm probably going to trust the person with eighty yeah. um, reviews, even if not all of them are positive. Sure. Um, so, do you have any recommendation for any kind of software um, that you can that um, our agents can use to do their design work for their mailers? Well, of course, we use um, Adobe InDesign, but we're mm -hmm. professionals, so I would not recommend <laughs> getting that unless you you know a large office and you've got a, a creative person that uh, uh, maybe already has that. Certainly. Um, the uh, if you're a Microsoft product would be um, um, what's the name of it now I can't think of it um, publisher. publisher thank yeah. you <laughs> publisher 
Um, and we use we we get publisher files from from uh, from clients that we we sometimes use. Um, quite often though, we'll 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 start with their publisher file, and and we both know this that they've got some ideas that they put down on a publisher file. We take it from there and recreate it in InDesign, and then uh, we can print from there. Again, we can print from publisher, but um, that would be the one. And uh, Apple, again, I'm a, I'm a Microsoft person. My designers are um, Apple people, mm -hmm. but Apple has uh, some publisher-type product that if you have an Apple, uh, you can use that mm -hmm. for doing basic design work. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, we can use it, um, but I think what's going to happen is is we'll be having um, a dialogue back and forth and 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 working with you on on that design. Mm -hmm. So the marketing collateral, if you are interested in doing something with print advertising, the marketing collateral is not all on you. That's something that um, somebody like Allegra can definitely help you out with. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm just going to give just a couple more minutes here um, to see if we have any questions. All right, I'm going to close it up for today. If you have any additional questions, feel free to contact me at jlarkin at crnstone.com, or you can contact Steve, and his information is right there on the screen for you. Don't forget to register for our other upcoming webinars in this series and in others. The next webinar is going to be Tom Levine's Tech Tuesday, last Excel um, webinar, Excel 301. And that'll be next Tuesday, and it's going to go more in depth with Excel basics, and you don't want to miss that. We also have two individual corner webinars coming up next week, one on Wednesday, one on Thursday, with special guests United Health One and IHC. And the next Build Your Brand webinar is going to be all about basic design and branding principles and the online tools that you can use to design, edit, print, um, flyers, logos, videos, and more, just some of really basic software things that you can use. So that one's going to go live on March 17th, so St. Patrick's Day, so stay tuned for that. All of those registration links are going to be on the Cornerstone website at www.crnstone.com slash events. All right, thank you all for joining us today. You will receive you. a copy of this presentation in the next day or two, and it will be available on the Resource Center. And if you have a couple of minutes after the webinar, please take a moment to fill out the survey that we've prepared. Your feedback is extremely important to us, and it ensures that we're going to continually provide value, like Steve here. Uh, and thank you for offering your expertise today. My pleasure. Uh, again, uh, feel free to call or email me. Um, no no uh, strings attached. Happy to answer any kind of questions, um, with, again, with no, no obligation. So. Awesome. And everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.